So it's Thursday the 9th of July 2020 and we welcome you to a webinar, a tilt webinar actually with Claire Wilson on interactivity, creativity and community, easy to use websites and edtech ideas for remote learning and beyond. What an attractive topic <laughs> that is for us at the moment. Thank you so much Claire, really really looking forward to this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Helen Myers, I'm chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning. We always thank Linguist Scope and Heike Filk, who've supported us in the work that we do, but I'd particularly like to thank the man who has brought us all together, who's put this fantastic programme together, who remembers everybody and remembers every date. So, Joe, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what can you offer us? Thank you ever so much, Helen. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to put, uh, well, to help to put together these, uh, these webinars, bringing in language teachers um, and people involved in languages from literally all over the world. Um, it's, uh, it's a very uh, exciting uh, thing to be a part of I think um, even with the, the the grim situation that we find ourselves in at the moment but I think it's definitely a silver lining uh, that we can that we can all look forward to and watch recordings back and what have you but as my day job I am a, an independent languages consultant and I do uh, make a living from doing um, webinars uh, at the moment and I've just put in the chat as I've uh, given in other webinars a list of 18 example sessions if you would like any support around remote teaching or hybrid a hybrid of approach um, as you will no doubt planning for yeah, September as of now uh, then let me know I am available now and over August as well um, I'd love to help if I can do so those ex 18 example sessions there's lots of information there on things that you could do but if you want me to do a deep mental webinar or I'm going to be starting some uh, some uh, webinars where individuals can sign up as well. In fact, we've got one on Monday uh, for All In, which you can find out on various Facebook groups I posted on or my uh, Twitter account. Uh, I'd love to see you there. And um, yeah, I just want to just want to help really. Um, so there we are. I am available, as it says on the slide. Over to you, Helen. Thank you, and thank you, Joe, because you do an awful lot for free. I know. Um, but yes, it's lovely. To, I know that um, people speak extremely highly of the sessions that you do, and you always give this. I always say the free aftercare afterwards. You're always, always on hand to be able to help us when we have questions. Thank you Thank so you. much for everything you do. Um, ALL, now is your opportunity. If you are a member of ALL, please write in the chat. I am a member of ALL and tell everybody else why it's good to join. Um, as a London branch, we happen to have decided to go for this route of doing webinars. We've been doing it for many years. Um, and it's just fallen very well that because we're quite familiar with doing this, we could then fill this gap that there seemed to be or this need for hosting webinars. Um, but everything is run by volunteers. We love it if people join us. It's not terribly expensive and for it you get, um, a, a, you get magazines, you get company, but above all you get somebody who's you know, a, a body of people who are there um, to talk to to help articulate your um, ideas. You join today, you will get 10% off the membership. Actually, it goes until the 30th of September, but it sounds better to say join together, join today, and you'll get 10% off. Um, you can already have access to all of the, the many webinars that we've had, even before this, this time as well, before the COVID um, period. So if you look on our website, you can see them there. And we've got loads of things coming. It seems that every day, Joe has found some other gem of a person who's going to come along. And to be honest, it would take far too long to go through and explain all of those. So if we can just have a look, feast your eyes on these people, um, please go to the um, website link and we'll put that in the chat and sign up for them. So, um, you know, we have got, we've got some people signed up for the summer social this Saturday. It'd be lovely to see some more people. It's just a group of us who just want to hang out together, chat, and we're going to have a little um, quiz. I've commissioned a quiz from Richard Margerison to do that. So that's going to be something there. We've got Graham Stanley coming on um, Tuesday, July the 14th. That's a brilliant session. I've already seen that one. Um, Carmen's going to be there on July the 16th. Do you like my little my little um, icon there for the show and tell, Joe? I've put together. There. I love it. I, I was going to say as well, we've actually got Carmen in the house tonight watching Ooh. because ah. uh, all the way from the States because she wanted to get a, a feel for how our Telt webinars go. So uh, a, a, a sincere welcome to Carmen. And uh, I'm sure at the end, if she can stick out to the end, then uh, I'm sure we'd love to hear her uh, chatting as well about her experience of her first Tilt webinar. Very exciting. Oh, that's lovely to know, Carmen. So, so then we've got the show and tell on July the 18th. Um, I know that we've got to stop for the 21st of July there. And then Melissa gould Drakeley, who's coming um, New South Wales, July the 25th. And there's one other person, I think, Joe Dale, Joe, Joe Dale, 
I'm saying your name and I'm saying Joe Dale. Um, there was another date as well, which I'm afraid I don't think I've included. That's um, fine. We've got, there's a couple of others that we're still working on to confirm, right. but we've got a couple of other people potentially uh, who, could, who could be uh, zooming in from the States, but um, we won't announce those until they've been absolutely confirmed. But all those, all the ones on your screen right now are all the ones that have been confirmed. So there'll be more uh, news later. And also we've got the show and I've oh, got the show. And yeah. Yeah. So that's everything so far, but we've got a couple of others in the pipeline, which we'll announce in due course. Okay. So, um, Please be aware of our etiquette throughout. As I've said, this is because this is being recorded, I'm now going to say it again, that we're professional, we're kind, and AWL London happy to host speakers and participants free of charge, and you're all responsible for what you say. Over now to Joe to introduce our speaker tonight. Thank you, Joe. You're absolutely welcome, Helen. Thank you so much. So thank you ever so much to Claire for agreeing to do a Tilt webinar. Uh, as I always say, I'm really looking forward to this session. Um, I didn't realise until I saw... Um, Claire's bio that she's actually worked for the BBC on the BBC uh, Bite Size, so I'm sure she'll mention that as well. She is a languages teacher. We always try to uh, encourage language teachers uh, who are doing it in the classroom, or in this case, in it remotely, uh, to share their good practice so everyone can benefit. That's what um, these tip webinars are all about. So it's absolutely brilliant that um, uh, Claire has offered to do this. And also, she's going to be talking about lots of things that she's been involved in, also around community building in relation to. Uh, Instagram, which I'm particularly interested in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram, but I don't do any sort of network on Instagram. So it's going to be fascinating to see how that all is working. And uh, also Bitmoji fans, uh, Claire's going to be talking about Bitmoji and creativity as well. But I won't uh, steal her thunder. Over to you, Claire. And thanks thank ever so much for offering to do this. And I look for we're all very much looking forward to uh, your session. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is a real honour um, to have been asked to do this and, and thank you. Um, I hope it's useful. Um, I, what I'll do just first of all is I'll share my screen because that's the bit that is always there. Um, and I'll, cl I'll collect questions. Yeah. So if oh, anyone has any yeah. questions, put a queue in front of them in the chat as per normal and I will collect them. And then I'll either ask them there and then if, if that's okay, Claire, or we'll have them at yeah. the end. We'll see how we get on. However, that's fine. Can you see okay. my screen? Yep, all good. So Very I'm going to turn cool. my video off now, but I'm, I'll be lurking uh, in the background the whole time, but I'll that's turn fine. off my video right now. Lovely. Cool. Thank good you. Luck. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Um, so a little bit nervous. This is the first time I've, I've done a webinar um, for what, for this long. I'd, I've done um, the Linguiscape show and tell, which was five minutes. And I think, I don't think I breathed for the whole five minutes. So I need to try and remember to breathe. Um, so I hope that you, you take something away from this. I, it's really hard to gauge, I think, uh, with technology and what everybody's been doing, whether this is something that you all know or whether it's new. So fingers crossed that there is something that you can take away from this. Um, some of it is a little bit jumping on the bandwagon, obviously with the Bitmoji um and the and interactive classrooms and things like that but but fingers crossed it's it's useful um so thank you i will um make a start so yeah really quickly um as joe's already said my name's claire wilson i'm a german and spanish teacher in derbyshire to 11 and 18 11 to 18 comprehensive school um i've been teaching for about 12 years now um but i have been I've, I've been on maternity leave, not consecutively for two years, but sort of sporadically for two years um, over the last few years. So, um, I mean, just the online world has been amazing for me, really, for the last few weeks, because I'd only just recently started back at school, having had my second baby. Um, so I was just getting back into it. And then all of a sudden we were on lockdown again. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I don't think I, I would have coped with that, all of the the help and the, the, the community that's on social media um, and it's just been brilliant. So thank you for anybody that's contributed to that and who's run um, a webinar or just, just anything on Twitter, Instagram, any support has been brilliant. So thank you. Um, so yeah, so just a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. Joe's already mentioned it briefly. I'm going to just run through a few um, websites that I have either recently come across or that I've been using for a few years in my teaching. Again, they may be websites that you're aware of they may be new I don't know a um, little bit of how I've been um, playing around with creativity since I've been um, working remotely and finally as Joe said um, Instagram seems to be growing quite significantly actually at the moment for teachers um, and there is a MFL hashtag which we've sort of started over the last couple of months which seems to be growing quite nicely um, so I don't know some people are really familiar with Instagram, other people not so much. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about that as well. 
So without further ado, I will make a start. So um, liveworksheets.com, I'll be really interested to know who's come across live worksheets before. Um, I've only recently been made aware of these. Um, this was, I, I compiled a list of websites on Instagram a couple of weeks ago um, and um, somebody commented, it's La Classe de Mademoiselle. Sorry, I'm not a French teacher, so I probably not pronounce that very well. Um, but she said, oh, she's, she works in the US actually. And she said, oh, you need to check out live worksheets. So I had a look um, and then I was like, oh wow, this looks amazing. And then um, I tweeted it thinking, okay, everybody must know about these. And from the feedback that I've got and having shared it with my own school as well, um, I don't think everybody knows about them, but I may be wrong. So it'd be interested to know in the chat if people have come across this. Um, but quite reluctantly, I only came across this in the last couple of weeks, like I said, and I think it would have been really useful to have come across this three months ago when um, I was setting worksheets for my classes and I've been uploading answers and they've been emailing me back the answers and actually this is a really good way of um, using a website, free website, to create interactive um, worksheets that can be marked straight away, self-marked straight away. So my plan, if this is going to work, um, is to just sort of give you a demonstration. This is, um, this is just, I put this on a PowerPoint just in case the website doesn't work or something, but just to give you a demonstration um, sort of live on the website, if it works about how to do it and what it's all about and just quickly how you can um, set up live worksheets. Um, as you can see just from my pictures on here, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, little sort of answer boxes, you can do little multiple choice boxes, you can embed videos and stuff like that. So this is the, um, oh, the bit where I've gone through. And so I'm hoping now that, um, that you can see my um, website and that you can see live worksheets. Fingers crossed you can see this. Um, so this is um let me go to interactive worksheet so this is the website and as you can see from here there are absolutely loads and loads already been uploaded on here um for loads of different subjects so if i go to german which is my main um main language that i teach there's a lot that's already been uploaded onto there um i haven't actually used any of these yet and i think so when i tweeted about it there was a little bit of a concern about copyright so i, I would just say you know exercise a little bit of caution if you're going to use some of these um, when I've created my own, it does keep reminding you, you know, that you, you know, make sure that you're not using copyrighted, uh, copyrightable material and things like that. So it, there are a lot of reminders, but obviously you don't know who's written them and, and where they've come from. So um, just be aware of that. But I found them really good, if nothing else, just to see the sort of things that people have been putting on and the sort of answers that they've been um, you know, that they've been setting up and things like that. So there's lots on there, but what I think is really good is that you can actually um create your own um so i'm just going to hopefully that's one that i must have started the other day here we go so if you go to make interactive worksheets get started it brings you up with this screen and then you can upload um oh, not upload sorry choose file um and if i just hopefully here's one i made earlier kind of thing um actually i'll tell you what i will do first of all sorry about that what i will do is just actually show you a worksheet that i've already done so that you can understand what I'm trying to do. So this is a worksheet that I created this week for my year nines. Um, and I've been setting a worksheet like this for the last few weeks. Um, I created this on Canva, which I'm hoping if, if I've got time, I can just mention a little bit later on. Um, but I've been creating these worksheets for my year nine into 10 um, to prepare them for GCSE. Um, so we've been, I've been taking all the vocab from um, the exam board list of vocab that they need and we've been slowly going through that and then I've gone right back to present tense and I've been sort of revising present tense with them um, and like I say what I've been doing up to this point is I've been preparing a worksheet sending it out to them on show my homework which is um, the platform we use for homework and then I've been sending out answer sheets as well for them to self-mark um, and then this week because I've discovered this live worksheet so I thought right okay I'm going to have a go at creating um, a live worksheet and this is the, the actually I think it's the only one that I've done because it's been such a new sort of discovery for me but the idea is so this is a little conjugation exercise and um, they can just simply hopefully this is working and you can see this they can just simply type in um, their answers into the box so that's the first activity, just a normal, regular present tense endings. And then this is just something where we were doing a little bit of practice on stem changing irregular verbs. Um, and quite interestingly, because I can't get my umlaut out at the moment, but it's quite good because it shows you what happens if you get it wrong. Um, so I, I do know these both should have umlaut on them, but I'm going to leave it for now. 
but the idea is they type in the, the stem, the irregular stem there. So they've put all their answers in, they click finish, and then they're given two options, either to check their answers or email their answers to the teacher. Um, so my colleagues and I tried to do the email my answers to my teacher this week and um, and it didn't work and we think it's because and again people might know this a little bit more than me if you've been using this for longer I think the students need to have their own accounts and I think that's all to do with the subscription packages I think there are some free ones at the moment so we've not looked into it really but at the moment it, we've just got our own teacher accounts so they can't for some reason email their answers to us but what they can do is check their answers and it just comes up with a score out of 10. And then all I've been getting them to do is just write on show my homework, the score that they've got, and it just gives me a bit of an idea of how they've got on. I mean, they could screenshot as well. They've been screenshotting their, shotting their books, so they could just screenshot it and send it as well. Um, but um, yeah, and as you can see what happens if, it, if it's wrong. Um, I don't know why it's a mark out of 10. It must be whether it's a percentage or something like that. There aren't necessarily 10 questions so I don't 100% know how that works but it's that immediate feedback I think even though it's it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense I think it gives them feedback they've got 10 out of 10 they know they've got it right if they've got any wrong then it's quite clear so that's one that I've made already um, so I'll go back to what I was going to do which is to just show you hopefully briefly I probably will spend a little bit longer on this um, and probably the next website and then it goes a bit quicker so apologies if this is a little bit fiddly um, and what I will do as well actually is just make my screen a little bit bigger because I think it might be quite hard to see but anyway so if we choose file um, I'm going to go with um, this web this worksheet here Fliega lead test and hope it uploads okay this is the bit that's worrying Word, Word documents seem to take a little bit longer than PDFs for some reason um, here we go. So this is just a very, very basic worksheet that I just sort of did really quickly the other day just to use as a test, just to show you some of the different functions. Um, so this was just created on Word. Like I say, you can do use PDFs as well. Um, and I've got a little gap fill exercise here. So Fliegerlied for any German teachers um, will know that it's a, it's a really crazy little song. I think it's actually an apres ski song um, with some great actions and I love doing this with year seven. It's good for verbs as well. So um, uh, I thought, oh, this is a good idea because I can sort of show you, hopefully, how to embed a video and show you a few different options. So um, what you need to do is you've got like this little sort of pencil um, and paper icon here. So you click that, it gives you a little um, cross. And all you do is you just draw a little text box and in that text box you put the the word or the answer or whatever it is that you're creating so i'll just do this i think i'm just going to try and make this a little bit bigger and i'm hoping that's a little bit easier for you to see um so again i do realize here for anyone who doesn't know this song that it should be flieger and not fleek but the song is just fleek um so trying to remember this. I've done it so many times, I think I know the words. I'm probably getting them wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, so beans are stark, stark and tiger, so gap fill, so kind of thing. And then I think it's all, oh, can't exactly remember, but it'll do for now. Oops. So I'm putting all the correct answers in here. Okay, so please bear with me. I'm sorry, this isn't the most um, riveting thing to watch this at the moment. Um, and then you can preview. So the little magnifying glass there is a preview button and then you can see the worksheet as the students will see it so I can put um, my answers in there I suppose I could have copied and pasted really that would have been a bit quicker but never mind here we go and then um, I'm going to go to finish and hopefully and check my answers and hopefully it gives me straight away 10 out of 10 so I think that's really simple I'm a big fan of easy to use things and obviously the worksheet itself takes a little bit of creating uh, but I think we all have our, our own worksheets don't we? we all have gap fills and things um, in our sort of resource bank so what I like about this is actually it's really quickly to make it interactive well at least I think it is um, so that's um, no, I don't want to discard it I want to go back I'm not too sure how to do that there we go so that's one option you can just simply have you know draw a text box so students have to write their answer um, so that's one option um, and then there are a few other question types as well um, such as multiple choice so again I'm going to draw a text box here um, I'm 
trying to remember, I can't do a spring, that's the one that I jump. So I'm going, what I'm going to do here, and I'm hoping this is how we, how we do it, because I say I'm not really confident with this website yet, but I'm going to put choose, and then I'm going to put a colon, and then I'm going to put the correct answer, which is spring. I think there are tutorials. I'll show you where to find the tutorials for this. So don't worry if, if you're getting a bit lost. Schwim, and then I'm going to put Fleek again. Um, and I'm actually just going to copy. Ah, oh, is it going to let me do that? Maybe not. Apologies for it being a bit fiddly. Oh dear. You're doing really well, Claire. Don't worry. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible to embed audio, isn't it? Have you used that? Yeah. 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 Have you used that before? I have, I've used, yes, and I'm going to embed a video in a second. Um, cool. If I just show you this option, I'm hoping this is going to work. I'll just do it twice, so Schwim and Fleek. And then hopefully if I view it, there we go. And you can see here that you've got multiple choice options. So you, as far as I know, you can put loads in there. So you put choose, colon, then you put a star and the correct answer, and then you put a colon, um, sorry, a forward slash, and then you can put your yeah, incorrect answers. But if you go up here, there are loads of tutorials that explain how to do all of the different um, options as well, all the different um, question types. So that's another option is the multiple choice. And yeah, you can also embed um, MP3 and videos. And this is great, like, it's so easy to do. So again, I'm just gonna go to my text box and I'm gonna put my video in here. So I've just drawn a big text box. I'm gonna put URL. Hopefully, so I've got my YouTube um, here up and ready. Oops, I'll find it. I'm going to copy and I'm going to hopefully paste the link. And this is the moment of truth. <laughs> is it going to work? Hopefully, if I preview. There we go. And I don't know if you'll hear it because I don't know if my audio works. Fingers crossed. So you get the idea. But so automatically you've got the video there, they can listen to it, they can do the gap fill. Um, and yeah, there's the option. I've not I've not tried MP3, how to embed sounds, but again, if you just go to the tutorials, it's, it's definitely listed on there, all the different question types. Um, there's another good one as well where you can do um I just close this one down. Like I say, bear with me on this website because I won't spend as long on some of the others. I'm just really excited about it. I think it's great. Um, you can also do, um, let me just, sorry, let me choose a file. I'm going to get up one of my vocab tests. Uh, where is it? Five, here we go, five a day. Hopefully this comes up now. Um, and you can do like a match-up activity. I guess it's quite good for year seven, but it's quite nice, um, this one. So this is a... I've, I've been doing a German five a day worksheet to support students with their vocab learning. I got this idea from Morgan MFL. And that was a really good idea, especially at the moment because students are really struggling with their vocab learning. So I thought, right, I'll create a little vocab sheet um, so they can learn, uh, they can spend five minutes every day learning some vocab. So the first one on here is a matchup. So again, another really easy um, activity you can do here. Question you put, um, I think it's join. And then I'm going to put number one. So Atlantic is going to obviously match up with this one here. Join one. So depending obviously which one it matches up with is, you know, you make sure the two numbers match. So join two Berg, which is a mountain. So I'll just do these two. I won't do any more than that. And again, hopefully it works. And you get um, like this little pencil, which is quite cute. <laughs> um, and you join them up and... Yeah, same goes, finish. Obviously you can do it for all of them. Check your answers um, and voila, there you go. Um, and to share it, all you need to do um, is, so once you're happy with it, click the, the tick button. And this is where it gives you the option if you want to put it on the main sort of website and it gives you sort of the, the copyright um, spiel there. I haven't done that yet. So I want to keep it private. I'm gonna put a title in there. Eager lead, save, um, and then it gives you the link there, which all I've been doing is just copying and pasting and putting into the, um, attaching to show my homework, or you could put it in your PowerPoints or whatever. So that's the first one. Um, so, if you want, so if you wanted to share a worksheet, you'd have to make it public onto their, on the website. Is that right? You can't share one with a colleague for them to then copy it privately. 
Um, I don't know. I, not without just copying the link. I don't, I'm not really okay. going, I'm not too sure to be honest though. At the moment I've, no, so when I've shared this, so when I made these ones um, and I shared them with my colleagues, I just, I just emailed them the link and it worked for them. But I, I don't know sort of any more technically than that. Right. But when you emailed them the link, they were able to do the activity or were they able Sorry, to they were duplicate able to, it? Yeah, no, they were able to do the activity just as a student would. Okay. Um, so yeah, that link, um, I mean, I can, let's just try it. If we pop it into here. So if, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, it comes up straight away right, with okay. the activity. Um, so yeah, I guess you could make a QR code out of it. I'm sure, like I say, if, you, if, if all colleagues had their own accounts and students and things, I'm sure there's a much easier way of doing it or a more kind of a way that you can save it and things like that. But I haven't, I haven't really looked into it in enough detail. At no, the that's fine. That's fine. So just to clarify, then you can create your worksheets and then share them with the students without them needing an account. Is that right? Yes, yes exactly. Brilliant. They don't need to sign in or anything. And that's what's great about this. Um, just as I've just done there, you just send them the, the, um, the URL, just send them the link, email, or like I say, show my homework, which is what we use. And this is what will, when they type that into the website bar, this is what will come up. And then they can just, you know, like I say, they just do the activity, click finish, make a note of their score or screenshot it or just send it to you. And, and that seems to have been the easiest way for us to do it at the moment. And, and for the site, is it completely free or is there a limit yeah. on how many worksheets you can upload? There is a or? limit, yeah. So as I believe there is a limit of 30 worksheets for free. Um, now, whether I guess you can delete them um, and put more on, but I suppose mm. if you wanted to build up a bank of them, you're going to need um, a bigger subscription, which at the moment looks like it is, um, it looks like it's still free at the moment. I think maybe they're offering... Here we go. Um, they are offering, here we go, free until the end of 2020. So maybe it's some kind of like sort of coronavirus, you know, freebie <laughs> that's been out there. Mm, that's great. Um, but yeah, so, you know, hopefully, you know, even in September, maybe it might be useful September up to Christmas if we're still doing some, because I know like our school have been saying, we're not 100% sure about handing out lots of worksheets and things. So even homeworks, I'm probably going to try and set quite a lot of my worksheets you know, um, remotely and, and online. So it's, it's just another option, I guess. Mm, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm quite excited by it. I quite like, <laughs> quite like things like this. And I like things that are easy. I think it's quite funny, really sort of being asked to do um, a, a webinar on technology because I'm, I love gadgets and I love technology and I'm really excited about how they can be used in the classroom, but I'm also really impatient <laughs> with technology. <laughs> My husband says, just stop clicking. Just <laughs> I get really like stressed with it, but this just seems really easy um, and really user friendly. Um, so yeah, so hopefully if you've not come across it, hopefully that's, that's fairly useful. Um, so if I move on, so that's the, yeah, I say main discovery and really gutted that I've only just found that one. Um, the next one is a bit of a retro one and I've probably used class tools ever since I started teaching um, it's been around a long time and again I'd be really interested in the chat to know who's come across this before um, I think probably most people have in some um, capacity um, but it's one of those I think other things come into play you know we have like Quizlet and uh, Memrise and, and other sort of more sort of gaming um, websites for vocab learning and grammar and things like that and I think probably I know I sort of certainly forgot about class tools and actually how um, how good it is it's, it's gimmicky I have to say it's quite gimmicky and it's not for everybody um, but for learning vocab you know make it a little bit more fun certainly for my GCSE classes when it starts getting a little bit serious to give them a nice class tools game um, it, I think is always quite popular so I thought I would just show um, a few of the things that you can do on, um, I'm gonna go back one, sorry, on class tools. So this one I haven't used a lot, but it looks really good and it's called Vortex. And I think this is probably quite good for grammar um, and sorting activities. So again, if you don't mind, I'm just going to, again, just bear with me with these websites. These first two are the, are the fiddly ones where I have to sort of show you live and then the other things are more me just talking through it really. So, Here's class tools if you haven't come across it. Um, you name generators and various countdown timers and things like this. Um, if you go to classtools.net, the vortex. How do you mean? And I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's fine. And I'm going to create a new game. And I think it's quite good for grammar. So I'm going to call it, um, I don't know, tenses. 
So really quickly, present, um, past, future, and because in German conditionals have um, umlaut and I'm really useless at <laughs> remembering the little shortcuts for, um, uh, for umlaut, I'm going to be really lazy and put infinitive. Um, so ich, oops, ich spiele tennis and ich esse Kuchen. So I play tennis, I eat cake. Ich habe tennis gespielt. Ich habe Kuchen gegessen. And I will play tennis. Ich werde tennis spielen. Ich werde, obviously you can put as many options as you want, I think. I don't know if there's a limit. Ich werde Kuchen essen. And then I'm going to have tennis spielen. And I'm going to have Kuchen essen. Um, save, it asks for a password. Now, I'll be honest, I've never ever gone back into it and edited it. Um, I don't even know how you would do that. So I, I don't know, people may know how to do that. I, you have to put a password in, but um, I, yeah, I don't really use that. So start, so again, really gimmicky, but for, you know, especially so lower ability classes love things like this, a um, bit of a treat. So each have a chance, sorry, that's really loud, is on my Kuchen <laughs> Essen, infinitive. And ich esse Kuchen, you get the idea. Um, hopefully it's not going to take long. Ich habe Kuchen gegessen, pass. I'll just do it to the end just so you can see what happens and I'll share the link and stuff. Um, ich werde Kuchen essen. Tennis spielen. Nearly there. Ich spiele Tennis. Okay, so pop my name in. And I think because you're going to share the link with the whole class, from what I remember, I think this happens, the high scores for the whole class will come up for that particular game. Um, and again, all I do to share this is I just copy the, um, the link. I don't, they don't need to sign into anything. Um, quite often when I'm setting sort of 15 words vocab for GCSE um, and I send it out to them, I send it out on Quizlet, which I really like. Um, and I sometimes make a little class tools game for them as well. So I'll show you that in a minute. But you can just, um, yeah, just copy and uh, send out the URL and it will bring up this game without them needing to log in or anything. Um, so that's the Vortex game. And then there's um, Arcade Game Generator. Again, really gimmicky, <laughs> uh, really retro. Um, create a new game. I'm gonna call this one Essen und Trinken. Food and drink, and I've just I've just got some words ready because again I didn't want to spend too long. So you need at least ten words. So this is great for vocab, like I say, um, ten words. I mean, you can have. I think you can have questions as well, but I just tend to use it for vocab. So it doesn't matter in what order. I've just put the German words first, put the word, then a star, and then the English translation. So at least ten words. I'm going to submit. It wants a password again for some reason. Um, okay, and then um, they've got a few different games. Now with this, some of them are, so Pac-Man, I, I can't remember the kids using Pac-Man, so I got quite excited, that, oh, they love Pac-Man, and then I played it, and actually the element, there wasn't a lot of German involved. I think they had a question at the start of the game, and then they played the game, and I think there was a German question after, so it was a little bit long-winded. So I'd say for vocab learning, I probably wouldn't recommend that one. Uh, but word shoots, I think, is good. The kids know more about this than I do. I just set the games up, and then they just go off and play it. Um, but this is pretty good. Click it, start, so obst, fruit, so the shoot it, vasa, water, worst, sausage. I mean, you know, kids love stuff like this, don't they? Um, so that's one option. Um, another one that's quite good, I was quite excited about this, if anybody had a Nokia back in the day <laughs> with Snake, um, you've got the words at the bottom, so Wurst, which is sausage, is the cherries, and I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm rubbish at stuff like this. In fact, I've already lost, but you know, the kid's better than me. Um, but that's just a quite a good game where they're just practicing vocab. So, um, so that's Arcade Game Generator, loads of different options. They, they quite like Manic Miner. Again, I'm not going to even attempt to play it, but uh, my kids always know a lot better than me how to do it. Um, I don't even know. There, there is German that comes up on here. There is, there is the vocab that comes up, but I don't know where and how. Um, but they really like it. And um, it's just a fun way of practicing vocab. So that's that one. And then finally, again, a bit of fun. 
Um, I've just been doing this at the end of some of my lessons that I've been setting, just, um, just to have a bit of a laugh with them really. Uh, fling the teacher. Um, you can replace, so if, if I create my own first of all actually, so this is a bit like millionaire in that the idea is you create 15 increasingly difficult questions. Um, I haven't been doing that, I've just been, um, I've just been doing it for vocab again and I've not necessarily increased the difficulty. Um, so here's one I did earlier. So the idea is you put the, the target language word first or the question first. It, I think this probably could lend itself to quite a decent question and then multiple choice options. Uh, but I've just done it for vocab. So pommers, I put star, then the correct answer, chips, then star, then three incorrect answers. Um, I'm gonna put a title in there. I'll just put food for now in English, create the game. Again, it wants the password or a password, it doesn't matter, just make it up. Um, and then this is me with my fun Bitmoji again. I'm gonna put my Bitmoji in there. Um, I'm going to uh, proceed, which hopefully, yeah. So, um, here we go, what do I do? So promise, so I'm gonna click the correct answer. Yes, it's my final answer. This takes quite a while, I'm not gonna do all of this. So chocolate, chocolate, and again, like millionaire, it's, it's going up the leaderboard here, or the, the points board. Um, I think you can ask a friend. I think the friend actually just gives you the answer, yes. Um, you can do a vote, a little bit like ask the audience. Um, I'm not too sure, minus two, oh, take two, yeah, so 50-50, and then at the end of it, if I just go back to my PowerPoint, rather than um, boring you and going all the way through it, they get this option to fling the teacher. Um, so you can see it here, that's my little face there, um, and they have, they've got a little hole that they've got to try and get me into, and I think they have 40 seconds to try and get as many points as possible, and then there's a leaderboard. So, I mean, my year eights thought this was quite good fun. This is one of the um, comments that I got on the show my homework the other week. Hello, Mrs. Wilson. I managed to fling the teacher. It was good fun. Um, so, yeah, so that's class tools. Um, if you haven't come across it and you sometimes got five, ten minutes at the end of a lesson and you're in a computer room or, um, like I say, with remote learning, I know I've been setting some... I felt like they've been quite dull worksheets, so at the end I've just sort of put a little arcade game um, at the end, or I've put a fling the teacher. And like I say, you can they don't need to log in, you just copy and paste the link into whatever platform you use, or into your Word document if it's a worksheet, um, and they can just go straight to it. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, fantastic. So these are all asynchronous ideas, you, you wouldn't do these in live lessons, is that right? So, um, I guess you could. I, in terms of my live lessons, I haven't tried to. Um, I'm not overly confident with knowing how I would do that. I'm trying to think if you did it on Zoom. Could, I mean, I, yeah, I guess they could. My, my Zoom lessons have just been me talking and sharing a PowerPoint, but I don't know, you probably know Joe a bit more than me about how that would work. Well, I suppose what they would do is they'd take a screenshot, wouldn't they, of their final result, as it were, and then to, as evidence, as it were. But I'd have thought probably off the top of my head, I think asynchronously would be nice for this. So you'd set um, a number of different tasks for them to do, but then provide evidence of that, uh, whereby they would then take screenshots or what have you, and then share that with you via classroom or whatever you're using. And then you could make it your own sort of leaderboard. And yeah, exactly. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's certainly one way of doing it. So I've not, other things, Quizlet Live, I haven't really done a lot of live competitions like that, but... For anybody who's a bit more confident in doing something like that, then I'm sure that would work. Um, but it's, you know, it's just a bit of fun. I think especially at the moment, I've been very aware that um, my, you know, I just, I've been really worried that my lessons have been quite dry. I've had content to get through and, and it's trying to find different ways, isn't it, of, of getting your enthusiasm. You know, me so enthusiastic and passionate about your subject and that's all stopped because it's all being done sort of over the screen. So I've been relying on, on things like class tools to, um, yeah, just to just to make it a little bit more exciting. And, and, yeah, like, and I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's really fantastic um, for student engagement to do these sorts of activities. I can see in the chat that people are really loving it. So you're doing a great job, Claire. Yeah, I think, and anything that's free is always a winner, isn't it? Free and easy to use is, um, is always good. And there seems to be sort of, you know, sort of a bit of a lack of sort of just simple games for them to play. So uh, at least I think there is, so that's a pretty good one. Um, so if it's okay, I'll move on to um, a little bit of a, a plug now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about BBC Bite Size. Um, so um, I was really lucky about 18 months ago, was it about 18 months ago? Yeah, no, um, I was asked to work on the new Kisei Street offering for um, MFL. Um, so we're probably all very aware of the Key Stage 4 BBC Bite Size, but they've made a real big push over the last couple of years to offer more at Key Stage 3. Um, and um, MFL has had a complete, I don't know if there was anything there before, there possibly was, so apologies if, if people have used something before. I know there were like little class clips, which I've used um, and, and things like that. But they've completely revamped their Key Stage 3 offering um, and I have worked quite closely with them on this. Um, and I wasn't, I'm, I'm never too sure, you know, with, with the BBC, how, what I can and can't say and <laughs> things like that. So I just asked them for a, um, for a little statement really of, of what they've been, um, what they've been trying to achieve. So you can read that for yourself, but they've worked um, very closely with, um, I'm never too sure how to pronounce it, NCELP or NCELP, uh, which I went to um, one of the meetings about, um, to try to provide, um, something you know for learners of, of languages at MFL, MF, for MFL so some good online content and what's always great is it's across three languages so French, German and Spanish and I think different from the key stage four being a German teacher um, I think I don't think there's quite the same amount for key stage four for French, German, Spanish but for, for key stage three it's exactly the same offering so there's absolutely loads on there um, and I'll just really quickly show you what's on there but there's obviously um, written content there's lots of videos lots of nice images um, an interactive game in the pipeline just a few sort of screenshots that I've taken from the German one um, and some of you have probably already been using this over lockdown um, but actually this all was going to go live and they were going to do loads of marketing just before we all locked down and we weren't able to do anything um, so I don't know how much people have already been exploring the new stuff but I thought I would just really quickly take this opportunity to show you because I have been setting quite a lot of this to my groups um, especially for grammar explanations and stuff like that so this is the German one um, so as you can see there's some stuff on phonics there's topics um, grammar and the, the Berlin Beat stuff is really great I think they've got this in French and Spanish as well it's um, they filmed some kind of authentic videos so uh, based in Berlin um, this mm, yes what so well, there are some clues oh okay got it what I will say there is quite a lot of German spoken in there I just happened to pick up on it and I don't know if you even heard that bit there's speaking a lot of English, but she's, she's over there learning German. And um, so she tries to practice her German and her friend there tries to um, help her with her grammar and with her speaking and stuff. So they're really good. I really like the Berlin Beats things. But if you just go to one of the normal um, activities, so describing your free time in German, there's a little video. Talking about, move down a little bit. A video game. If you want to talk about what you do in your free time, the verb spielen, to play, so you get the idea. Loads of explanations. Um, you've got some like, sort of interactive kind of flashcard type things. Um, and then there are, I don't know if I've picked up, there's quizzes. There are other activities. I think there's listing activities on here. Um, so there's absolutely loads. And again, I think for remote learning, um, I've certainly been setting a lot of the grammar exercises. So when I've done all the recap for my GCSE classes next year, I've been setting um, the grammar ones, you know, I haven't been filming any grammar lessons myself. I know a lot of people have been using Loom and things like that to film themselves, you know, teaching. Um, I've done a few live lessons on Zoom, but I haven't actually filmed anything myself. So these have been really useful just to go over grammar points. Um, so that's do, the do online... you need a, Sorry, Claire, do you need yeah. an account to access uh, this? Or is it no, just, you just go on the website no, and where you go? All there. Yeah, just type in, you know, key stage three bite size, um, and it will, yeah, gives you all of the key stage three subjects that are on offer. So again, no account needed. Um, click on your subject. Let me go on to a Spanish one or something because I've looked at Spanish before. So, so great for independent practice as well for the ones yeah. that, that can't get enough of it, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, and the the, uh, the whole aim of the bite size stuff was really for the students. You know, that was is with, with the students in mind, and so it's bit we've tried to write it in a way that you know students sat at home who's really struggling with their work on you know their family or really struggling on their work on the future tense the idea is that they can go into this and, and get some support with it and get some help 
I've even been using it. I've been learning French and I've been using the French one mm-hmm. to help me. So, um, but it is, it has been written, um, you know, to see actually a year seven learner, a year seven student in mind. That's um, great. In the, in the chat, uh, Sharon has said, my students have said that they've really enjoyed using this for their remote learning. They find it easy to use and clear to understand. So that's great feedback for you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Sharon. That's great. Yeah, because we, it's, it's been hard to get feedback, I suppose, because it's just been so new. And that's why I just wanted to show it because... Like I say, you know, some people have been using, I've been tweeting about it a little bit and stuff. And, um, but it's, it's so new and hopefully some people can, you know, have just discovered it and can use it. Um, and then I don't know how much people have been watching the online, sorry, the online, the iPlayer daily lessons. Um, so to following on from the online stuff, um, Obviously, there's been a backsize. I've had this big commission now where they've been offering all these live lessons, um, and French, German, and Spanish have been included in those. I know this has been really popular at primary school. I know a lot of primary students have been using it. I'm not so sure with secondary. I think quite a few have, but I know primary's probably been more popular. Um, and I, I don't know how much um, how much the language stuff has been watched. I, I, I would be interested with some feedback on this, actually, see if anybody's actually watched any of the language ones. Um, again, I worked on the, the German one for this, and it was very much based on the website, the online content, because obviously with, with such a quick turnover, there wasn't a, a time to create a lot of content and new content. Um, but I think it's been quite hard to find. And even when I was looking through it again the other day, Sometimes even if you go to the iPlayer, it'll say, oh, you know, learn about this in maths and learn about this in, in history. And then there might be French on there, but it's not actually always listed in the title. So, yeah, I'd be interested to know if people have managed to find these. But they are still available. And I had a go at finding all of the, um, well, I say all of them. I don't know if they're all on there. There might be a few more for Spanish and French. Um, I had a go at trying to sort of link all of these because I'm I assume if I can share my PowerPoint and hopefully people will be able to get this. Um, so there were only three for German, unfortunately, quite a few more for Spanish and French. Um, and I've done this really quickly, so I hope all the links work and I hope they all marry up with what they say. But if I just click on the German one just to show you where they are. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping to use these, if they're still available in September, I'm hoping to use these a little bit, because if nothing else, Katie Thistleton, who's um, a Radio 1 presenter, you know, it's pretty cool, Katie Thistleton teaching some German, so <laughs> I will probably um, get my students to watch in these here. still. So the, the language bits are always the pick of the day at the end. Um, so you go through a lot of this, I think English and maths and all that kind of thing, and then about 15 minutes from the end, you get the pick of the day. Um, and that is the German here, so, so a German teacher who teaches it. Today's Pick of the Day subject is German, and we're talking about minor hobbies. Here are a few of mine. Uh, reading, of course, playing tennis. Move on a little bit. Ins Kino. It's Gehen, which is to go. Correct. And keep... So, yeah, I'm not going to play that too long, but you get the idea. So, yeah, I don't know if people have been, have been seen any of these or if there's been any use. Like I say, they were put together really, really quickly um, and they have been quite hard to find. So I'm hoping that by sort of, con, sort of putting them all together in a bit of a list like this, I'm hoping that people will be able to maybe make some use of them. Might be a nice thing to set for the last week or something like that. Is that okay? Yep, all good. So, um, uh, Katie was saying in the chat, uh, went looking and was struggling to find any German stuff listed. So your PowerPoint, that's really useful. If you're happy to share that, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, Anna said, I looked a couple of times, found things like learn to count to 10, the year five, uh, which was too basic for her children, which is fine. Uh, and then she said, maybe I should go back and have a look at the other content. Uh, hadn't thought about looking at some of the year seven stuff to see if there was anything yeah. useful there. I will do that yeah. now though. So this is really useful, Claire. Thank you. Yeah, and actually one thing to say about that, although it's listed, yes, well, it, I mean, they list it as 11 to 12, 12 to 13, 13 to 14, but it's, it's all mainly based on the website stuff, which as I've said, is kind of from year seven up. So even though, um, I mean, I'm looking at the Spanish, you know, year eight school for Spanish, I haven't, um, I don't know if I've watched this one particularly, but you know, I know for certain that I do school in year seven Spanish. Um, so they're not necessarily just for year nine. Bedroom and prepositions, you know, you can do that with year seven as well. So I would I wouldn't get put off by the fact that it says it's for a particular age range. I would um yeah, have a look at some of the others as well. Okay. 
Right, I will move on because I'm aware of time and I don't want to spend too much longer. So that's, that's my main bit of showing websites and things like that. Um, so sorry, it's been a little bit fiddly. Um, creativity then. Um, Bitmoji, I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us have jumped on the Bitmoji bandwagon. <laughs> um, I discovered this a couple of years ago, actually, and I started making stickers for their books um, with my face on, which seems really kind of seems a really odd thing to do but they seem to quite like stuff like this um, if you haven't tried bitmoji before and i'm probably preaching to a lot of people who've already done this but you do need an app i believe i don't know if you can do it from a website from a browser but i've done it on the app so on my, my iphone so you get the bitmoji app which i think is free and you can create your avatar which is a lot of fun sorry um, and the really exciting thing for languages is you can change the language so you go to your Bitmoji settings in your settings on your phone. It's a really simple switch. It doesn't switch your whole phone as well, which is great because I always worry that it's going to switch my whole phone into German or Spanish, which would be fine, but I don't always want that to happen. Um, so you can change it um, into German, French or Spanish or probably any language. And the great thing is then it automatically comes up with loads and loads of Bitmojis and little statements and things like that that can be great for praise, great for um, all sorts of different things. Um, so I've just sort of screenshotted, um, I think I just typed in Toll, which is great in German, and it just came up with, with all of these. I mean, some of them are in English, um, because Germans use a lot of English as well, but there's some really great ones in German. Um, so that's how you change the language. And there's been loads with Bitmoji over lockdown. Um, and I think, I think there's, there's, a, there's a Facebook Bitmoji group, there's probably groups on Twitter as well, um, Joe. So it's, I, I, it's, people have gone crazy for it and come up with all these really, really crazy ideas. Um, and the, the ways that I've used it, um, Fling the teach, Teacher, which you've already seen. I made a virtual classroom, which are all over social media pages. So if, you, if you're not sure how to make one and want to make one, um, I've hyperlinked those with loads of YouTube videos and recipes. And I've even put my work, so if you click on the whiteboard, it just goes straight to, the work for that lesson and um, so that's been quite nice I've not done it every single week but every now and again with my year seven and eight again just where I've been a bit like oh, my worksheets are a little bit dull I want to keep that motivation I want to keep that enthusiasm for the language and um, so I've just said right here's my virtual classroom go and explore and then I've set up a we use Microsoft forms so I've set up a Microsoft form and asked them a few questions about what they've done um, which has been nice to get that feedback um, there's been some really great virtual tours. Um, Leanne Adley um, had shared an amazing German one, and then I think people have created a French and Spanish one on top of that as well. Um, so thank you. I've, I've messaged Leanne myself and said thank you so much because I've shared it with all of my colleagues. And I've just changed the Bitmoji on each of the slides. So all the hyperlinks work, she's done all of that. And then I've just changed the Bitmoji for me. Stickers I've already mentioned, you can buy stickers sort of pre-ready to go from Amazon and it comes with this software that you put on your computer I think and print stuff. I can't remember exactly how I've done it. I did it a couple of years ago but you can create stickers for their books. A um, few praise cards I've been seeing on social media so I made one um, for my classes about halfway through lockdown where I, again I was just wanting to really praise the, the, the kids that have been working really hard so I sent them all a little praise card on email which I created with a bitmoji and I made the certificate on Canva, which I'll show you in a second. And my most recent one is I've just made a little language library for, um, I've put for GCSE, I haven't made a GCSE one yet, but I've just made an A-level language library for them to do a little bit of reading and watching um, YouTube videos and things over, um, over summer to help with their independent research project and the books that we study as well. Um, so that's Bitmoji, and I'm sure there are loads more creative things that people have been doing with Bitmoji, and it'd be really good to see what people have been doing. Um, Canva, really quickly then, um, again, gone crazy over lockdown. Um, I've, I've been getting really frustrated with Word <laughs> and how it doesn't always format if you don't make it into a PDF, and it, things move around, and it frustrates me a little bit. So Canva has been a really welcome um, discovery. Um, it's, it's all online. Um, 
you download the app. So I originally started with downloading the app, but I do do quite a lot of my worksheets on the on the internet, on the browser website now. Um, and you basically become a graphic designer overnight. There's loads of amazing templates. You can really jazz up your creations. Um, there is a other, I think there still is, or there certainly was a free educational upgrade for teachers. You just have to show some kind of proof of, um, of, of being a teacher. Um, and there's, if you do have the educational upgrade, you get lots of worksheet, worksheet templates, uh, presentations, infographics, things like that. Uh, so these are just a few things that I've created with Canva. These um, worksheets here for my GCSE classes, which I've shown a couple of times. I created a little bookmark infographic for my year seven, just to remind them how to learn vocab. Um, little PowerPoint here, learning German is like. And then the other two are a couple of social media posts that I put onto Instagram. It's great for, if you do use Instagram, Canva's great for that because it, you can really make a really nice, bright, visually appearing, uh, visually appealing um, sort of picture or post really, really, really easily. Um, so just quickly, I said I wasn't going to show any more websites, but I am going to. <laughs> I'm just going to show really quickly Canva. Um, this is what it looks like. This is the obviously the browser version, but you can get the app. So I've got it on my iPad and on my phone as well. Um, and you can see here education infographics, education infographics, and you've got worksheets. So if you click on a worksheet, um, just click on that one, and you can really you can change it really easily. So you know you can sorry present tense for example you can add there's absolutely loads of clip art and even more if you get the education upgrade so you can type something in and it gives you if you put an animal in so you put cat you know if you're doing animals and there's just loads and loads and loads on there um text i've not used videos but i'm sure there's other ways you can upload your own photographs as well um, so I really would recommend Canva. It's probably been the best find um, over lockdown and it's been so good to make, to make my stuff look a bit more creative. I'm not the most creative person in the world. And I, like I said, I don't like spending ages on things. You know, I'm, I'm a mum. <laughs> I've got two little children running around. I haven't got the time, unfortunately, to create beautiful resources. I can really appreciate it when other people do. But Canva has been quite an easy way of, of just making my worksheets a little bit more appealing. Which again, I think has been quite important for the kids not to just see a fairly boring word, word document every week and just to make it look a little bit more exciting. Make it look like I put a little bit more effort in. Um, so yeah, that's Canva and just my last bits and then I'm nearly finished, so I won't keep much longer. MFL Insta, um, just a little bit then on community. Um, I am a massive fan of MFL Twitterati and the Facebook pages. I've been a member of them for quite a few years. Um, Twitter has been a little bit of a slow process for me. I sort of use it and then I forget how to use it and then I use it again. Um, Facebook groups I've used a lot. Um, and then about a year ago, um, I've got a little girl starting school in September and I noticed quite a lot of primary teachers were setting up teacher accounts. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna set up a teacher account of all the primary school teachers because it would be a good way of uh, finding things for her to help her prepare for school and then as the year's gone on and certainly over lockdown um, it seems to be taking off quite a bit for teachers um, I think they call it teachergram which I think sounds a little bit strange <laughs> but um, teachergram so a lot more secondary teachers are, are going on there now um, and then I was finding a few people sort of saying oh are there any languages um, accounts to follow and then I sort of said, oh, well, maybe I could create a list. So I've started a list which has got nearly 100 accounts on, um, which has grown quite a lot over the last couple of months. Um, and then we created, I put a poll on Instagram for a hashtag. Um, so hashtag MFL Insta. And if you're not used to Instagram, and I know it's not for everybody. Um, it's, it's very different. I think it's very lighthearted. It's very fun. Um, it's very visual. I'm a visual learner. So I love photographs and I love seeing pictures. So it, it suits me well. Um, but it is, it is different from the other social media platforms. But then I think that's probably what's quite good about it. There's quite a lot of challenges on there, photograph challenges. Um, you know, and I quite like it for infographics. So I follow quite a lot of specific language accounts where they'll show like a word of the week or they'll give you a really good picture of you know beach vocabulary or something so I'm constantly screenshotting things that I'm going to be able to use hopefully um you know with the students so um so if you haven't tried it and you fancy um setting up an Instagram account as a teacher please just go for it follow the MFL Insta but similarly if you use it for personal reasons as well you can still follow the MFL Insta you don't need to 
you know, you don't need to make your account public or anything like that. You can keep a private account and just get involved and, and follow it and just sort of see what goes on. Um, but yeah, it's been quite good fun and I'm quite excited to see how it's going to grow. Um, a lot of trainee teachers seem to quite like it as well. I think it's quite a nice introduction, I guess, into sort of the social media world. Um, lastly, um, this was quite popular. I put this on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago about how I save my resources. Um, and Joe mentioned it might be useful for people to know. Um, when I went back to work earlier this year, I had sort of some of my resources on the USB, some on the school computer, some on my computer at home. And I was getting quite stressed out really that they weren't very well organized. So I've spent a bit of time over the last few weeks getting them all organized and really thinking about how I want to store them. Um, so I've, I've been using iCloud. I have um, a lot of Apple products. I've got a Mac and I've got an iPad and I've got an iPhone. So I've been using iCloud for my resources at the moment. Um, and I do think cloud storage is the way forward. I think I'm wanting to phase out my USB because I leave it all over the school anyway. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I've been using iCloud. I do pay, I think it's about £2.50 a month, but that's because I've got thousands of photographs. I love photography and I love organizing my photographs. So um, for £2.50, I, I store all of my resources on there and I store all of my photographs, not as files, but I store my iCloud library. And the great thing is when I'm, you know, if something's shared, say on the Facebook group, um, a document that I really like, I use the files app, which I've screenshotted on here. I use the files app so I can automatically save it into a file. And then I go to my Mac and it's, it's on there already. It's not like I've got to be transferring it over or I've got streams and streams of photographs and screenshots from files that I've saved on here that I've then got to spend time um, putting onto my Mac. So it's, it's good for that. The only thing I'm not 100% sure how it's going to translate to is when I'm back in school. Um, school have got, I think it's, is it OneDrive? Um, so I think I need to try and get my head around OneDrive and maybe use that. For now, I'm just going to have to still use my USB, I think. But I do take my own personal iPad into school. So it means that I've got all my resources as well on there. And if I need something, I can just email myself because I'm on, on the Wi-Fi on my iPad. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been really good. I quite, I'm, I'm really into cloud storage. And again, I think people are getting a little bit more confident with cloud storage because we've, we've been using it more over lockdown. Um, just to show you how I organise them. Um, it's taken me a while. <laughs> it's took half an hour, hour every night for the last few weeks, which is really sad. But I'm so glad that I've done it. Um, so, you know, all my, so if I go to topics, that's where a lot of them are. All my grammar. I've even got infographics that I've screenshotted and stuff like that. That hopefully now are all ready to go. And if I need to use them in my PowerPoints or anything like that, then I've got them. So that hopefully that might be of use to people. Again, I'd be really interested to know how people save resources and store resources and I think again ages ago I think it was when I went back to work I put out on Facebook how do people store their resources these days you know what do they use instead of a USB and a lot of people were starting to say cloud storage um, which certainly seems to be the way forward so um, hopefully it works for me so that's that's about it I think sorry I think I might have gone slightly over the hour but <laughs> not at all you're fine because we had the introduction and everything it's been absolutely right. brilliant Great. Uh, I think uh, any more questions in the chat? I think we've answered all the questions that have come up. We, um, I've either put them to you, you know, you've been brilliant answering them, Claire, or people have answered them in the chat. Just to to clarify with Canva, uh, yeah. so when you create your uh, your image in Canva, you can download it to your desktop, but let's yeah. say, and then or yeah. you can store it in Canva. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Let me just come back to the Canva page. So if I go to some of my designs here um so if i go to one of my worksheets that i've made yeah and that's a really good thing about it actually um you don't even save it it's just a work it's a working document that just saves automatically the only problem with that is if you change it um you lose you know the, the previous version mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. um but yeah so you've got it all on here it's a working document and then at the top here you just download and it gives you a few options to download quite often if it's a worksheet i'll download it as a pdf but you can download it as a jpeg if it's a picture that you've created um, it's really easy yeah that's brilliant so because helen was asking in the chat whether you could then import that into into um onenote which you could do as it's an image so you could choose a png file presumably yeah. uh, i think that was one of the options, that was one and of the then, options. yeah sure. um, awesome 
And with with Canva, did you just sort of like learn it on the job? Did you just, or did you watch a few tutorials, or how did you? What was your, your I did the job. It, It's really easy. It is really easy. And as I say, I'm not the most patient with technology at all. And it's because there's so many templates. Um, I mean, there are loads of tutorials out there. I'm sure there are. And I don't believe I watch it. You know, I I just pick. I mean, you can obviously create a brand new one if you're a little bit more arty than me and a bit more creative. You can create. Um, somewhere oh here we go create a design I think you just create it from a blank template but there are so many templates on here so I just tend to pick one that I kind of like the look of so if I want a presentation quite like this one um, and then just have a play around with it you can't go wrong really um, you, there's some really nice so if you want to get rid of that you can just really quickly I'm going to delete it you can delete the whole group or you can just delete the elements I'm going to delete the whole thing and then I'm, I want a different looking um, title. So I don't know, let's go with this fancy one here. <laughs> Parmesan cheese. Um, let's say we're going to do about, I don't know, I'll come back to my Essen on Twig. It always comes back to food. <laughs> um, I'm here and, and yeah, and then I might put a, a little, um, I don't know if there's any food clip art. There's loads. I've got a burger on there. <laughs> it's just so easy. It really is. Because uh, I remember when I was looking at Canva before, and I remember um, next to quite a lot of the clip art, there were little coins. In other words, you had to pay to access some images. Yeah. Is that still the case? Or is it because you're using the educator? Account? No, I think because I use, I, I put something, again, as a Canva Facebook group, and I think I joined it and I asked um, what the difference was, because I think I did that before I upgraded. Um, so yeah, I originally started off, I mean, that's a good thing to just start off with the free one and have a play around with it, but there is a limit on the amount of clip art that you can have or elements as they call it. Um, but as yeah, from what I know, as soon as you upgrade it, you go, you get absolutely reams and reams and reams of stuff. Yeah, and I think the only thing they said actually that you can't do on the education, so there's an educational upgrade, there's a premium upgrade, which you have to pay for. And I couldn't work out the difference between those two. And they said, oh, you can't get rid of the background um but you can <laughs> i've from what i can tell if you if you got like a different image and it's got a background i don't know, google image or something like that um as far as i know you can still get rid of the background so i don't know why somebody said that but i can't see a difference between this and the premium upgrade there must be something but i've not worked out what it is fantastic we've got another couple of questions if that's okay so we've, that's got, fine, yeah. we've got katie saying can you download the presentations on Canva as a PowerPoint presentation? Is that possible? Yeah, I think you can. Yes. So Perfect. I was, I created this presentation um, on Canva, but I, I think one of my pictures was a, yeah, I think the first one was a MP4 because it was a moving, you can see it's moving around. So it didn't give me that option. So I ended up having to screenshot and do all sorts of fancy things with it. Um, but if you just create in a fairly bog standard PowerPoint presentation you can either you can present it on here if you've got access to it and, and there's all sorts of um, animations and stuff like that as well I think that you can you can use on the actual Canva site but if you just want to download it as a normal one yeah it looks like there's an option to download it as a PowerPoint presentation. Fantastic and can you make um, can you make animations like sort of animated GIFs and things like that? I don't know because you've got Adobe Spark Post, which is similar to Canva, um, and one mm -hmm. of the options there is to export as an animated GIF. Because I um, I really like Adobe Spark Post, and particularly the way that you can add uh, icons. Um, so you, all the like these sort of those black and white images that you can use with uh, within your uh, graphics are really nice and to to access. And one of the options is you can add uh, different transitions or different animation effects and then save it as a GIF, which is quite a nice idea yeah, as well. Yeah, maybe. Again, it might be a little bit beyond my um, expertise at the moment, but it, it would be interesting to have a look at that. Um, there's, there's certainly like this, like I say, this little MP4 that I've just found in templates. So like I did a little motivation post on Instagram. Um, and there's there you go. Yeah, so it's that, it's that type of idea, and then yeah. you could then convert that into a GIF. Yeah. So I just simply got that off, off the elements, um, but I don't know. Right. Then yeah, I'm not sure how you would do it as a GIF. Again, you could probably look into that, Joe, and see if that's possible. But, I will do. I will do. Yeah. So, and then also in the chat, Florence has said, "Can you have interactive elements on Canva?" So I suppose a bit like a Genially or Thinglink. Can you add like hotspots? Uh, yeah. like I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I've not 
I've not, I've, Gina Lee's on my list to have a look at over the holidays. So I'm not, okay. I'm not so too presumably sure. You could, yeah. you could take an image from Canva and then put it into Gina Lee and then add hot spots that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's beyond me. Uh, so Katie's asked, is the education upgrade permanently free or is that a COVID offer? Do you know? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure, actually. I think I get the impression that once you've got it, you've got it. Um, cool. It seems a lot, a lot of effort. I say a lot of effort. It wasn't a lot of effort. I think I just sent in my um, ID badge or something or they want your training, uh, training your qualification, your PGC or whatever qualification. Um, and I don't know, it just kind of happens straight away. And there's not been any... I've not seen anything that said it's got a time limit. So I guess only time will tell, but I, I couldn't say for definite, really. It seems such a, a bargain <laughs> to get all of this. Um, it's such a great sort of, you know, graphic tool to get all of this for so long. So I would understand if it was just because of coronavirus, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's time yeah, that's to awesome. have a look into that, I think. Fantastic. Well, I, you, you've had lots of uh, lovely things said in the chat um, oh, uh, for feedback. So I'm sure you'll enjoy... <laughs> looking through uh, everyone's okay. comment but i think it's uh i think I'm, i can speak on behalf of everyone this has been a really interesting session it's really uh channeled my creativity for for, for sure and given lots of really nice uh, interactive ideas um to keep uh sort of you know that sort of pupil centered approach in in live lessons or or asynchronous ideas it's been really great so thank you yeah. ever so much claire it's fantastic no worries that's fine no that's definitely been sort of my aim that's been my worry i think because i suppose a lot of people have felt it's just I'm really big on motivation and enthusing students and my worries I've lost them a little bit over the last few few weeks and months so I've just been trying a few things that have just made it a little bit more exciting. Lovely. Do, do they like your bitmojis? Do they think it's cool? Yeah well, I think so. <laughs> Not really. They like the fling the teacher um, and they really liked my years I loved the little um, certificates. I don't know if they liked it because it got my face on it <laughs> the bitmoji or whether they just liked the fact that they got um, recognition. Um, so I don't know it'd be interesting to, when I go back to see what they think they might think it's a bit daft but well, I, I can see you've got lots of fans here, so we think it's wonderful. I think it's, a, it's the, the time now, as Helen likes to do, a lovely screenshot of everybody. If everyone uh, turns on their webcams and, uh, and their microphones Last and gives Claire... Share. Is that the best Yeah, thing yeah, you know? that's okay. And then gives Claire a very well-deserved round of applause <laughs> for these fantastic ideas that she shared with us. Um, and lovely to see Carmen face-to-face uh, -face as well in, in the webcam. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, Carmen. Uh, and hopefully it's given you a feel for how the Tilt webinars work. Your link works now, Carmen. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> put the preview link in on the thing. So, but brilliant, Claire. That was lovely. And I just sort of the, the comments are lovely. Where's Doa, who said, "You are so friendly, Claire, and <laughs> an amazing presenter." And I thought that's oh. lovely. And that is the sort of thing that, in a way, you, you, your enthusiasm comes across. But you're so modestly about it all. Oh, thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. <laughs> so, let's take. A picture is everybody showing themselves who'd like to share? You understand some people have reasons why they don't want to. <laughs> okay, so if everyone looks up now, please. So, uh, is it Irina? Ir 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 <laughs> just nearly getting done. I'm just you know, being very careful about this to make sure everyone's looking and everybody is smiling. And you are. So, I'll take a couple. Here goes one, two, three. Lovely, there's one. I'm trying to disguise the fact that my hair's sticking out. Your hair's fine, Helen. It's no, absolutely fine, honestly. Don't <laughs> desperately need to cut. One, two, three. Oh, sorry again. One, two, three. Lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a really nice, it's a nice picture. Great. And if you want to open up your um um audio, anybody. You're very welcome if you want to say thank you to Claire personally yes, rather than right. much. Definitely. Thank Let's you. give Claire a round of applause. Come on. Oh, round you. of applause. Great stuff. Bless you. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Good. <laughs> well done. Good. And thanks Good. so much, everyone, for, for all these wonderful webinars and support on social media and everything. I think it's just brilliant. It's great to be a part of it. <laughs> you always awesome. say it's teamwork. You need everybody, but you especially do need Joe to bring us all together and then the quality presenters because um, that's why we come. No problem. Uh, Carmen, maybe do you want to turn on your microphone and just um, say hello or give us a snapshot of what you're going to be talking about in your webinar? Would that be okay? Sure. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. So 
my accent certainly isn't as pretty as um, you guys. So hopefully you'll understand me when I'm talking next week. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be talking about um, rethinking some of the tech that you probably use all the time and maybe giving you different strategies for how to like freshen those ideas up a little bit. Um, I'll be highlighting a few different sites. One is called Wiser. Um, it's sort of similar to the live worksheets, but it's it's very different. <laughs> so what is that idea? It's it's called it's a worksheet type thing, um, and just a few other sites that I'll I'll highlight. I'll use some gifs, and hopefully we'll laugh a little bit, and just re really think about when. Um, Sometimes we might be able to take an idea that we've used over and over again, but just to recalculate it a little bit or reboot it so it becomes a little bit more fresh and more modern um, for the way we have to teach in today's world. So hopefully I'll see you guys again next week. Thanks. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Thank you so much for coming tonight as well. It's been brilliant. And how, how, has, how has lockdown been in general with the, for yourself and also with the, the teachers that you've been connected with? Um, here in the States? Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've watched the news and seen the numbers. And so things aren't great here in the United States. Um, I don't know. It's been fine for us. I'm in North Carolina, which is on the East Coast. Um, so I'm not in one of the states that's been hit super, super hard, although we've had our issues. But staying connected, um, I am the past president of a regional world language organization. and. I've probably attended more professional development since March than ever in my life combined. So like you guys, we just all united and said, just like Helen said, we are all in this together and we have got to stick stick together in order to move forward. So yeah. it's been interesting though. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with, with that um, sentiment. Absolutely, fantastic. Great, Ooh. great to see you, Carmen. And we do, We I love hearing, well, I mean, as language teachers, we just love hearing different accents, including yours. <laughs> well, thank you. I listen to a lot of um, audible books and they're always British. And so now I know what GCSEs means and I know all these words and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say brilliant. That's a, that's a word I don't use very often. So I'm excited to <laughs> Brilliant. understand me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. And that is Lovely. It. Claire, you have totally, I mean, Honestly, I thought I was perhaps going to relax a little bit, but now I'm going to have to go <laughs> to those things. And, and it's interesting what you said, Joe, about the Bitmoji, because I do wonder whether that is an age thing. I mean, I tried the Bitmoji. None of my kids have commented on it. You can see it's a Bitmoji, which is nothing like me, because you can't get wrinkles on a bit Bitmoji. It's got to be <laughs> obviously not me. <laughs> <laughs> and there we are. <laughs> Uh, it's great, really, really good. Oh, right, well, I should put these things together. What I do is put it all on the website, and then Joe, you do the um, recording, don't you? And then I'll put a link. Yeah, to yeah no problem at all. So either it'll, that'll be tonight or it'll be tomorrow morning. So don't forget, everyone, if you check out my YouTube channel, all the hours and hours and hours of tilt webinars are all there, plus uh, webinars that I've given as well, all for free. Uh, which you can access. Um, and I know some people have said to me um, that they have not been able to attend, you know, as many, particularly now that people are going back to school, but they, they want to catch up over the summer. So that's some, uh, some, an op another opportunity um, as well. And in fact, in relation to that, obviously we've got, we've got quite a few webinars uh, happening still in, in, um, uh, in July, but I was wondering, you know, what people were thinking about in August, if people wanted us to <laughs> say, uh, carry on like mid August, late August. Um, personally, I'm hoping to go away for a week if if we're allowed to um, down to Sidmouth. Uh, the folk festival has been cancelled, uh, unsurprisingly, but um, we're still going to stay in the cottage and do the things we normally do, but uh, just not with all the music and everything. But um, I was thinking it might be nice to have a bit of a break for everyone, uh, but maybe start again mid to late August. Maybe what do people think? Yes. Okay, so I can see, oh, yeah. De Deborah. They're yeah, about fantastic. week in exotic Sydenham, Joe. <laughs> cool. No, okay, good. well, um, yeah, we can, we can obviously talk about that later on Twitter or what have you, but that's what I was thinking. Um, have a bit of a break and then uh, we can then start up again. The thing yeah. that we do recognise, I mean, on, we always say this on secondary, I don't know if any of you are on Facebook, secondary MFL resources, that we always say to people, everyone's got a different work pattern. 
for some people they actually do like using the holiday to catch up a bit so that during the when they're at school they're not quite as frantic so I'm afraid that whenever I see a notice from people instructing me not to work I think well actually no people are it, it's your choice isn't it for something I imagine I mean I don't have children but I imagine people with children sometimes you may well want to make it that you've caught up a little bit so that you you know you're not quite as frantic but so we can yeah, we can find out who's available who wants to do anything and not be disappointed if, if you don't get loads of people that recordings can be still there can't they so we can yeah yeah that's just fine. find out what they need basically i paid to be able to have up to 500 all summer <laughs> so anybody who wants a room and then to entertain up to 500 people just let me know you can come here <laughs> And we've also got the show and tell as well, which I'm not sure we, we didn't mention, I think, earlier on, but we've got the show and tell on the 18th of July, which um, we've got a Google form, haven't we? Should we share the Google form in the chat? Yeah, that was Helen? the one where I was looking for your praise because I put a lot of effort into the picture for it, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. But yeah, so we, we did. Sorry. Sorry, Helen. We did. So we shared. Yeah, the amazing graphic that Helen spent hours on was fantastic. So yes, but we didn't share the Google form link, did we? I don't think we can ask. Oh, so yes. Yeah, so let me just go. So share. if you'd like. To, so everyone, if you'd like to do a, a five minute slot uh, on the 18th of July, then that would be amazing. And then this coming Saturday, we've got the AWL social, which I believe will involve music and quizzes. And well, and I mean, that's well. whoever wants to come, because I do feel a bit in, you know, it's, it's not everybody's thing. And I know that now we haven't actually got the same sort of lockdown. Other people might have other things to do on their Saturday mm. night, but sure. some of us don't. No. And um, so, for example, as I say, we've got this, um, Rich is going to put together a little quiz. So we thought we'd have a 15 minute breakout room doing a bit of a quiz and then share some music, that sort of thing. So the other thing actually I didn't mention, if anyone, because this is a bit more of a serious thing, is that tomorrow night, AWL is holding... Um, a webinar to talk about the off-call suggestions for the GCSE exams. So don't want to. Start, I don't want to talk about it now. But that that's on as well tomorrow. If anybody mm. is interested in that, you can come along mm. and, and look at that. So, um, do you want me to put the link to the? Um, if that's okay, is that on at seven o'clock or is it eight o'clock? The off-call. The off-call's at eight. Eight o'clock as well. Okay, brilliant. It really, and it is just a, you know, more or less a, I suppose talking about what, what the rationale seems to be and encouraging people to join in, join it in. Because certainly AWL doesn't have a policy on these things, but the policy, well, we have a policy of saying we, we, we want people to be informed about what's going on so that no one can say later on, I didn't know anything, mm. nobody asked me. That's, that tends to be the reason for it. So, and for the link to register for that, Helen, um, is that on the AWL London website? Um, if I, shall I get that for you now? Because it's... Uh, all right, because Katie's asked that in the chat. Yeah. I know, I've noticed it's on, but I, I, I'm not sure myself how to register I for it. it I didn't actually, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't... Yeah, I can I can find that now. Perfect. It's my event. Thank you. Right. Yeah. On my second screen. <laughs> off call consultation webinar. Here we go. 309 have signed up. Wow. We normally get half. It's odd, yeah. isn't it? Whatever you do, normally half, over half have come to this one though, to yours, Claire. You've done well. <laughs> I think it was 48. 48 was the, was the most for tonight, I think, uh, which is lovely. That's great. So I'm finding the link now, view. Here we go. And this is going to be recorded as well. Um, okay. If, if you've got another thing you'd like to do on a Friday evening. So that's, that's great. Thank you. And what was the other thing? And then I was looking for the Google form. If you got it yeah, for the show and tell, I'm sure there'd be lots of people that would want to uh, sign up and share oh, their, lovely. their good practice. It was good. Wasn't it? I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed that. Um, here we go. I'll share the oh, four people have already signed up. Excellent. Good. So I'll go view. So I'll do, a, a, this is a direct link to the event, right? There we go. And then I'll do a link to the Google form. Is there. And we did say, didn't we? I mean, people can choose to do it in advance. Mm -hmm. but sometimes we find that people then um, get a bit braver when they yeah, see yeah. how nice everybody is who's there. That's fine. Uh, 
they join in. So um, I think that's everything, isn't it? Yep, I think that's everything. Fantastic. So thanks again, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much to Claire for such a wonderful presentation. Lots of cool ideas to have a look at in the uh, over the summer, if not before. Uh, lots of fans of Canva, I can see, um, and Bitmojis. So that's uh, particularly good. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking um, at the seems to be like you have the, like smart codes, isn't it, with the live worksheets for for adding different um, multimedia mm -hmm. elements. So I'll, I'll have a look in in that as well. I know that uh, Esmeralda Salgado has used live worksheets with audio as well. So for like listening comprehension activities, that'd be another thing to have a look at. But yeah, great stuff. Thank you. And you'll really enjoy reading all of the comments. Um, after school. That's another thing is I put all the chat together on the website to be able to see that. It's nice to see Samuel doing a little bit of a, a clap. I, I forget about the things, the <laughs> signs that we can have. So fantastic right well i'm going to make a move if that's okay our members as well i was reading through it's lovely to see people joining us absolutely really good still it's lovely. like an evangelical event sometimes you know come on roll up join us <laughs> <laughs> definitely okay i'm going to make a move now if that's right. all right thank you joe ever so much for all you do Thanks, really joe. no problem no good. problem at all lovely to see everybody and thank uh you. i will see you all online i'm sure in a moment if you're on twitter and all that but i'm just gonna <laughs> chill out. it's that half past nine at night so I'm gonna chill out for a bit now bye for now <laughs> bye. thank you and katie i've sent you a link so you can find out whether you belong or not <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> You know, I now include, you know, um, on the event, right, when people join or, or register, I always include, are you a member of AWL? But I also include, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you don't always know. And I had the embarrassment that I think the year that I was, um, um, what do they call it, president elect, and I wasn't quite sure whether I was a member or not. And <laughs> it was that. And then when it came to, um, you know, going on the course as well, going to the um, event, I was the last person to put my name down. So there I was, you know, president elect. I was on the supplementary list. Just, you know, always been to be a member. So, so it's Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Cadman Jones. She, she, Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. And now everybody leaves us. There was Doa, who said such a lovely, I thought that was lovely, Claire, what Doa wrote. Because <laughs> oh. I just think that is a very important part of the whole presenting thing isn't it being actually showing you as yourself as... I think so I think you have to be sometimes quite unassuming <laughs> you know it doesn't do you any harm does it to sort of show that you are human and certainly like that with the kids I think <laughs> yeah. probably play myself down a little bit too much sometimes <laughs> well no but I think it helps people it does make people feel uh, well they're, they're warm to someone as a person I know but also yeah. it's the idea of you know actually no you're right not everything is perfect I mean, and obviously you are, you do brilliantly. My goodness, you've got, you know, to have been to have been involved in all those things and the BBC bite size and everything. That's that's great, and it's it's fun doing that, isn't it as well? That's yeah, it's been really nice doing something that's not you know different from from teaching because that's all I've known for the last sort of twelve years. So um, it's been really good to see a different industry as well and how it works. And it's it's been yeah, really good. I have mean, been around quite a lot now, and I've. Um, you know, years and years ago, I used to, I would sometimes get be asked by the BBC to go up and be involved in things. And I just loved going there. And I love being with these creative people. Yeah. And you'd think, gosh, what? And they always seem so happy. And you'd yeah. think, you know, I mean, I do love my job and I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. But sometimes I think, gosh, what an environment to be in where you would just sit there. And it was to do with sparking ideas. Yeah. And really think, oh, yeah, that's good. And you could do this and you could do this. And I, I loved it. Yeah, it's really, it's been really interesting, really, really good. Because I mean, obviously, been in Derbyshire and they're in Salford now, so I've been up a couple of times because it's you know quite easy, and it's just been really interesting. It's been a really great experience. I don't know how much more will come from it, but it's been, um, yeah, it's been great to do something a little bit different. But I'm ready to get back in the classroom now. I've been, been off, off, um, you know, I'm intent to leave, and then I was just really, really loved being back, and yeah i'm ready for things to go back to normal definitely it's what, yeah. I, what I enjoy <laughs> things that i've loved seeing some of the twi the tweets where people have just said oh it's been lovely to get back there and i mean i've been doing um 
Um, I don't do much teaching so much now. I'm sort of officially retired, but I'm doing two year 10 classes and a year nine class. Yeah. And one year 10 class is an after school class where they do German on timetable and they do French with me after school right. as their second language. So there are, well, there are seven of them and then two people, two of, uh, of my own timetable choose to join them. And I have been seeing them every week and I've, I've just loved yeah. it, having yeah. nine faces there. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, you, you miss it. Really. Yes, and I think they do as well, don't they? I think they really miss that interaction. They wouldn't probably wouldn't admit to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they were there for me, really. I have to say, it was, what it was but you know, the sort of social bit of it. Yeah. Um, and actually, dare I say, for, for those who've been coming quite a lot, I think they are. If anything, they are further ahead than they would have been at this time. It's this divide, isn't it? The ones who haven't yeah. been engaging, not yeah. at all, but the some of the others because they've had my attention. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right, but let you go. You've been working all night. Just <laughs> back Good morning. Thank you so much. It's been Lovely. great. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Yes, you yeah. too. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you for your comments.